196.1 carry. Hi guys, Ali Taylor here, and today we're gonna to be checking out, have Titleist made their most explosive and powerful irons ever? Right, so today I'm talking about the new Titleist T400 irons. Now these scream power. They look big, not maybe as chunky as I thought they would do, but let's have a real close up look at the head. Let's hit some shots with seven iron to start with. I've actually got a full set. So what I might do in today's video is kind of just hit a few shots with each one and give you an idea how far these clubs are gonna hit the ball. So they with my swing speed. Um, why it might be a good thing, why it might not always be as good as you'd think hitting the ball further and further with your irons. But let's have a look at these because I think we're gonna get some really, really interesting results with these today. So we have got a hollow constructed head, much as many of the manufacturers are doing nowadays. But from the back, it looks really, really good. For me, it doesn't look like there's too much tech visual there. And in the long irons, there's up to 100 grams of titanium between the heel and the toe of the club to give us that little bit more forgiveness. When we look at the sole of the club, there's supposed to be some improved turf interaction. So certainly for me, the club shouldn't be losing any speed coming into the golf ball. And as we look at the club down behind the golf ball, for me, it, it's quite a long head from toe to heel. I would say kind of a mid top line, not the thickest that I've seen out there. And certainly for me, for something that is clearly designed to hit the ball a long way, this is a really, really good looking golf club. Right, so as ever, I'm using my normal golf ball, Titleist Pro V1X. So let's get along, we're hitting some seven irons to begin with. Let's look at, because it's definitely a big thing nowadays, because golfers are getting fitted around seven iron, about how far seven iron's going. So let's hit a few of these. I'm gonna talk specs on these shortly. But like I said, behind the golf ball, for something that's clearly gonna be a, a distance orientated iron, I think it's a really, really good looking club. Oh, that's quick. Okay, so nearly 129 ball speed, which is super, super quick for me. And that one, 180. So maybe it didn't go quite as far as I thought for that ball speed, but long for a seven iron. So again, 127, 184. Now, even though it feels very, very quick off the club face, which it clearly is, I don't think it feels overly hard, which I quite like. I think there's a lot of irons out there nowadays that are hitting the ball further and further mainly down to the way they're getting designed. But I think some of them out there feel really, really hard and maybe that's part of the selling process to make it feel like the ball's going further. Felt a little bit out of the toe, but still nearly 124 mile an hour. That one's gone further, so a little bit out of the toe. I'd expect the spin to be down. Right, let's just go a couple more with seven iron. it a little bit again still very very long Again, didn't flush that by any means but still very very quick now what I would say guys is I'm not expecting these to perform absolutely perfectly for me these are kind of standard length regular graphite shaft now these aren't aimed at me so I'm not expecting you know, to be testing a set of these that are set up perfectly. This is to give a pretty rough idea that we can see there, they're going a lot further than I would potentially normally hit my seven iron. Now we're gonna talk about why that's the case after we look at some averages. Right, so we look at the average there. Average ball speed, 126.4. Average carry, almost 185, and almost 200 total. So that's long for a seven iron, but why does that seven iron, even not set up correctly for me, get me hitting the ball a long way? So the first thing is, 
the loft on this is 26 degrees. So yes, you heard that correct, 26 degrees seven iron. And I'm gonna put the specs up on the screen now for the set of irons. Now bearing in mind, when I first saw these were only available from five iron down, I was a little bit surprised, but when you look at the lofts below, you can see why when the five iron's 20 degrees, you can see why they can't really go any straighter faced than five iron. Now, I'm gonna hit a couple of shots. I'm not gonna hit everything like I said at the start, but I'm gonna hit a couple with five iron and maybe a couple with pitching wedge, just to see how far they go. We're then gonna talk about how that setup of the irons is it really being honest that that says seven on the bottom and it's 26 degrees? I mean, what I would say is when we look on optimizer here, it's clearly saying that for a seven iron at the speed I was swinging, I should have been hitting the ball round about 165 carry. So I'm still getting really decent launch angle at seven, just under 17, even though a couple of those were maybe just a little bit thin. We're certainly seeing that as ever, my angle of attack is a little bit shallow, that, that's more a technique thing. But ball speed is up, which is down to the loft of the club being stronger. Backspin is down, which again is down to the fact that the loft is stronger. But with my club head speed, I'm still able to get the ball up and flying at a good height to get the ball to stop on the green. So that moves me into five iron. Now, obviously traditionally, and I, I thought maybe I should stop talking about traditionally because when I'm talking traditionally, it's over 20 years ago now, so it's, it's probably not relevant. It used to be four degrees difference per club, which would give you that 10 to 12 yards. Now the challenge is when you're getting seven irons in at 26 degrees, you suddenly can't go four degrees less and get down to a three iron. So you just, you're never gonna get the ball off the floor. So what we're seeing with the modern sets is only a three degree gap as you go into the, the longer irons. So the five iron here is 20 degrees. Now looking at my carry distances for seven iron, I should be looking round about 205 as my carry, but certainly over 200. So let's hit a couple with five iron and just see how that works. So we see 130 ball speed, a little bit thin, but only 191 carry. So that wasn't my best one. So I'd take a bit of a miss hit five iron being 190 carry. So nearly 136 ball speed, 203, round about what I would expect. Let's go one more. Again, 137, 204. So on the good strikes, yeah, you know, it was getting out where I would expect. Let's look at the solid strikes though there and just see what my kind of launch angle, height of shot and backspin was like. So launch angle was still good at 13.9. Backspin was actually still very, very good at just under 4,000 and still getting round about that peak height. So I think when you're moving into clubs like this, you know, clearly it's very understandable that the five at 20 degrees, most golfers probably aren't even gonna get a five iron in the bag. But I think the big challenge is these more hybrid design irons are definitely gonna hit the ball a long way. So I think when you're in those mid to longer irons, that can be a real positive with these type of clubs. Now, where we might see a little bit of a negative is when we move down into the short clubs and particularly into the wedges. Now, interestingly, with the T400s, it comes five iron down to pitching wedge, and then it goes wedge one, wedge two, and wedge three. Now, pitching wedge is 38 degrees. Now, I actually have a double check on that, but it actually says it on the head. Wedge one is 43, wedge two is 49, and wedge three is 55. So kind of getting away from calling it pitching wedge, gap wedge, sand wedge, because in theory, yeah, there's two gap wedges in between that and the sand wedge. So let's hit a few shots with the pitching wedge. And then let's talk about the three wedges and see what their good and bad points will be. So pitching wedge, I mean, wow. 
that looks almost like an A10. No big surprise, loft-wise isn't a million miles off an A10. So let's go pitching wedge, let's see how far this is gonna go. So 113, maybe a little left. Nearly 150 carry. So that's long for a club with a P on the bottom, but about the right distance for a club with 38 degrees. So let's just go one more pitching wedge. Again, so round about that 150 is my distance. Now, I know it sounds incredibly good hitting pitching wedge 150, but my issue is then when you get under 150 yards, how do the clubs work? And particularly when you're getting into those shots under 100 yards, how good do they work? Now, certainly for me, when I pick up the 55 degree, which is a sand wedge, it's big, it's chunky, and I don't doubt when I hit, if I was hit full shots with that, you know, it's gonna perform really, really well. Now, not too worried about kind of my numbers on here, but let's just hit what I would feel would be my normal kind of 70 yard shot. So absolutely on the money, 69.3. And fair, look at the backspin at that, at nearly seven and a half thousand. I'm pretty, pretty impressed with that. So the only thing I don't like with the wedges that match these sets is, and this is just a personal thing, some guys might love this. They just look very big, very chunky, and they don't look like there's a lot of feel involved in them. I mean, actually when you're hitting the shots, they actually feel pretty good, but, I still think for fitting my eye, I still prefer to have something like my Vokies, my SM8s, and then the issue would become, if I've got such powerful irons that are really, really bombing it, and the pitching wedge at 38, I'd probably have to carry wedge one and wedge two anyway as part of the set, and then maybe carry my 52, 56, and 60. So I'm kind of getting into a set that's got six wedges. Right then guys, so in recap, have Titleist made their most powerful irons ever? Yes, undoubtedly. Hollow head, really, really forgiving. Very, very strong lofts. So they're gonna hit the ball a long, long way. So I think anyone who's out there who's looking for more distance, and the one thing I do really, really like with Titleist in the last few years, is there was very much a stigma for years that you had to be almost a category one player to play Titleist product. That's definitely gone. They definitely make product now from driver through to wedges, putter, golf balls that suit every standard of golfer. And if you're somebody who's looking to hit it further, these will definitely get you doing that. Now, my negatives is I just don't think a club at 26 degrees should have a seven on the bottom. I think it becomes a little bit of an ego thing and all we're really doing is renumbering the irons. And this isn't a criticism of Titleist, this is every single manufacturer out there. It's almost like sitting around at the golf club, it's an ego thing to how far do you hit your seven iron? Well, if my seven iron's the same loft as your four iron, there's every chance I'm gonna hit seven iron further. So I understand kind of why it's happening and it's much more of a marketing thing than a performance thing overall. The performance with these is coming from hollow head, tungsten in the right place, giving you that forgiveness. Becomes a little bit irrelevant what it says on the bottom. If a club goes 20 yards further as an iron, and it's got the same loft of your old clubs, two clubs different, they've just put a different number on the bottom. So I do I do like the T400s. I think they're, they're good, they look good, they feel good, and they're going to perform. I still think when you get into that bottom end of the bag, into the wedges, that's where it becomes more and more challenging. And potentially, guys are going from carrying three wedges in the bag to carrying five or six. Now, are the irons hitting it further? Not really, it's just stronger lofts and renumbering. So guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, like and share it. Comment below as ever and I'll try and get back to as many people as I can. Let me know if you've tried the T400s. What did you think? 
Were you sold by the fact that it was just hitting it miles? Did they go straight in the bag? And is that a great thing for you? And if you're just somebody looking to hit it further with your irons, these have got to be right up at the top of your list. If you have enjoyed today's video and you don't currently subscribe, please consider clicking the subscribe button, but ring that notification bell and then you'll find out when I drop a new video. Follow me on all my social media platforms, all under Ali Taylor Golf. Hopefully catch up with some of you guys down there soon. Stay in contact.